managing your money well and making sure all your bills are paid is the first step to financial freedom. But if you don't know how to manage your money and pay your bills, you're always going to be in distress and feeling like you can't ever get ahead. In this video, let's fix that. Because financial literacy isn't really taught to hardly any of us, we grow up having to figure this out on our own. So we have to figure out how to manage money, how to earn money, and then how to make sure that all of our bills are paid and we can do this thing called investing everybody keeps talking about. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through five things you can do to manage your money well, pay your bills, and start moving the needle forward so you can start investing and actually creating financial future. The very first tip is what I call the 70, 10, 10, 10, formula. Without the 30,000 foot view of managing money, you'll never actually get there. So this formula allows you to see the four buckets you're going to put your money in. The very first one is your needs. And you're probably going to be in the 60 to 70% range for your needs of what you earn. So this of course is dependent on how much you earn. But the first thing is you're going to need to make sure all your bills are paid. This is your mortgage, your car payment, your phone bill, all of the things we need to make sure we get paid. Then the next 10% is investments and we want to see that continue to grow. So you start off with 70% as your need and 10% investment and our goal is to get that 70 down to 60 and that 10% investment up to 20. We want to transfer a 10% over to our investing. So not only do we start building up our investments, I actually suggest creating a wealth account. About seven years ago, my wife and I were on a plane. I was reading a book and it suggested creating a wealth account where you automatically put 10% of your income into that account. I started talking to my wife about it and we agreed that was the best thing to do. So we set up a wealth account and 10% of our income went into that wealth account for years. In fact, we still do that very thing today. All of our money that we don't use goes into investments, but we still transfer 10% into that investment account because it reminds our brains and it reminds our finances investing is important. The goal is to see that continue to rise, but continue to invest, continue to invest. The next 10% is fun. I want you to go out and have a little bit of fun. I want you to go out and take the kids out. I want you to have a date night. I want you to go to the movies to have a little bit of relief because here's what a lot of people don't understand about money. If you don't spend some money, you won't train your brain to be wealthy. By spending money, if fine dining is really important to you and having a really nice glass of wine, go out to dinner and do that. Make sure you're spending that money on things that you truly value that build your wealth mindset. And then the last 10% is contribution. Every single person should be giving. Every single person should be giving. And so here's one of the things a lot of people look at this system and say, Mike, but what about savings? Where's savings on this thing? Here's why I started to forego savings and my wife and I don't have a traditional savings account because we have an investment account. Investing is far greater than saving. Yes, you want a little account with a thousand to two thousand dollars in it as an ER fund that can just handle anything that kind of hits you by surprise every month. But saving a big pile of money doesn't really do you any good, especially if the dollar in America is losing value. We want to get that invested into something. So I want to see your investments grow rather than your savings account grow. And that is a shift to a significant upgrade in your financial mindset. And the second thing you got to do is work from a budget. Nobody who earns a lot of money or has a really good money management habits doesn't work from a budget. Nobody's good enough to just work by feel throughout the month. Because the truth is, I feel sometimes like we're doing really good. And so we go out to eat. And then back in the day when I was really, really tight on money, I started looking at my finances and realized, you know what? Pizza Hut got more than our rent this month. We might need to tone it back a bit. The idea is that working from a budget allows me to see where my money's going and make sure I'm not spending money on things that aren't really valuable and aren't going to get me ahead. I can tell you one of the mistakes I made early on in my life is spent way too much money on things that didn't really build my future and where I wanted to go. It's really easy to buy food, sit on the couch, and just let life pass by. That's really easy. It's very simple to do that. It doesn't take much effort. But it never brings people happiness. And here's the reason. Because we are built, we're wired to grow. We're wired to change. We're wired to continue to get better. And unless we step into that, 
we're always going to be dissatisfied. And a budget creates guidelines for me to grow. It's like a soil. Think about it like a garden. Planting your money in a budget allows it to grow. The idea about just going through the month by feel, it feels like we have enough money, just not a great way to manage your money. In fact, if I can say this in a loving way, it's kind of a childish way to look at our money. And I did this for years. I am exhibit A on doing this. When I was in my early 20s, I didn't know what I was doing. And I was spending money I didn't have and put my family into a lot of debt one pizza at a time. And it can happen that way, right? And so I want you to have a budget. And when my wife and I got a budget, it wasn't until our 30s, we really started tightening down our spending. Our whole entire life changed from a financial perspective. The thing I like to say in working with a budget is budgets are our boss. See, the idea of having a boss is they direct us. They should be leading us, not just dictating us. But boss's job is to manage people and grow and build people. The word boss, sadly, has gotten a really negative connotation in our culture, but I see it as a really good thing. It's an awesome thing to have a leader that's developing you. That's what a budget's supposed to do. It's supposed to tell me at the checkout line, hey, Mike, don't be buying that, man. You don't have room in your budget. You, ain't, you don't have room to do that. I guess if the budget's talking, it's you don't have room in me. But the idea is you don't have to do that. You do not make enough money to make this decision. So let's put that back. Let's continue to work on your earning and your money management. And we'll come back and get that when we're ready. That's what a boss does. And that's what your budget will do. And that's why setting this up, it can guide you towards real financial freedom. But just running roughshod through a month, going by feel, it's no wonder we're struggling managing our money. But it never ceases to amaze me when I see somebody walk into the finish line and pay $200 on a pair of shoes and then act like $10,000 for a coach is way too much money. And I'm like, $200 for a pair of shoes that you're probably gonna wear, maybe you'll wear all year, maybe you'll wear a couple years and then it's gone, versus a coach that can shift your life and change it forever, and we act like those are worlds apart. That's where our mindset has to change. I used to think this. I used to go in and spend money on hunting clothes and fishing gear and doing all this stuff, and then I realized that this doesn't really build my financial future. This doesn't allow me to give more. It doesn't allow me to live more. It doesn't allow me to, to spend time with more people. It doesn't allow me to do any of that. It just sits, collects dust most of the year. So we need to shift some things. Before we go on to the next tip of how to start managing your money and make sure you're paying bills, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We give a lot of content on earning money, saving money, making money, investing money, how to invest in real estate, but our real goal is to help people just like you create financial freedom. So subscribe to the channel, join our family, and make sure you turn on that bell notification so you get notified every time we do a video, which is every single weekday. When managing your money and paying your bills, at least have one goal you're working towards, please, because if you don't have a goal, you're never gonna get there. So do you wanna retire in five to 10 years? Do you wanna make $2,000 in passive income? Do you wanna make sure you get all your debt crushed in the next two years? What is your real financial goal? Most people don't have one and they're trying to manage money and pay their bills and that's really the end of their desire. My friends, life is way too short. We need to have bigger goals and larger mindsets that say, the only reason I'm working to manage my money and pay my bills now is because my goal is to get to complete financial freedom so I can help all kinds of people. That's what we need to start thinking. If that's the way we saw money, a lot more money would be attracted to our lives. So again, we've got to have a goal we're working towards. And if we don't, let's write one down today. Tip number four is you got to have a system that works for you. Whether that's a spreadsheet, a notebook, an app, you've got to have a system that helps you manage money so you can quickly get a picture of where you are at in the month. My brother and sister-in-law love YNAB. You need a budget app and they use it all the time. My wife and I are more spreadsheet people. So we track our expenses through spreadsheets and we track our expenses through a spreadsheet budget where we're looking every month at kind of what we're spending. So you have to use a system for you. If handwritten ledgers work for you, my goodness, go the handwritten ledger route. Come on, give it up team Rolodex, right? But the truth is use whatever system works for you. If that's the system you like, use it, but you have to have one. I heard somebody say, without systems, teams fail. And let me tell you this, without financial systems, your finances will fail. In fact, Leanne and I have even said in our relationship, in our marriage, without systems for our relationship, we fail. Without understanding that on Friday nights, we cut off a little early to connect together as a couple, without having systems like that, without having some financial systems, even that we both are agreed to, and some connection systems, meaning time throughout the week where we can check in and connect when we're both in different states and traveling, those systems keep our marriage strong. And the truth of the matter is, without systems, everything breaks down, 
especially your finances. So let's get a system that works for you. If you're not really a tracker, you've got to have something that at least can track it for you. Have somebody help. If you're in a relationship or you're in a marriage where one person's a little bit more numbersy, another person's a little bit more free spirity, then get somebody who's the numbers person to put a little system together that everybody can work inside. Because without tracking it, it won't change. I love what Darren Hardy said in his book, The Compound Effect. What doesn't get tracked doesn't change. And it's the same thing with finances. We got to track it so we can know what to do with it and where we're weak and what systems and pieces of our lives need to be shared up so that we can keep growing in our financial picture. After you're managing your money well, you've gotten to a point where your bills are taken care of, it's time to invest like crazy. Invest every single dollar you can. Leanne and I did this early on where investing was really important to us because we realized early on, and I really learned this from my parents because I saw their investment really changed the standard of living they were allowed to experience and they really really had growing uh, and I really had growing up is they were able to own properties and invest I'm like I need to do the same thing now Leanne's family didn't do that so when we came together that was the piece of value I brought was let's invest and the piece of value she brought is she's very good at seeing where we shouldn't be spending money let's cut it there that's not really a value and really good systems so we made a good team and said whatever we're not spending we're investing every single thing we can meaning we're gonna drive a little bit more modest car we don't need a really expensive car I'd rather invest and have financial freedom than have a two thousand dollar car payment that's just not my game I'd rather have freedom than the car invest everything you can because the truth of the matter is once you invest everything you can for a few years it's not very long where you can drive any car you want and still not really feel it in your finances but you have to invest every single thing you can. Investing is the ultimate goal so that you can have freedom and you can start contributing to the true causes that matter to you. I also have a free gift I want to give you. I wrote a book called The Seven Secrets of Managing Your Money and Creating Wealth. Click the link in the description, go to that book, snag your free ebook, it'll be emailed straight to you, and you can start reading and taking in the content that'll help you build your financial future. I'll see you in the next video.